I invite us to read from the book of St. Matthew, chapter 13, verse 15. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed thence. And when he was come into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue, insomuch that they were astonished and said, Whence had this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And his brethren, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all with us? Whence then had this man all these things? And they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country, and in his own house. And he did not many mighty works because of their unbelief. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we stand in your presence right now. All of us, God, these are your people, bought with your blood. Jesus, they, we belong to you. Lord, we have no access to them except by your word to their hearts. I pray you'll cover me under your blood. Let your anointing be rich. Give me utterance, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, to the saving and deliverance of soul, mind, and body. In Jesus' name we pray. You may be seated. I feel like dedicating this little song to those who will claim the supernatural benefits today as I speak on the topic, it is time for the supernatural. Uh, I know you're not sitting near to each other, but just say it to yourself, it's time. It's time for the supernatural. Linda Randall sings a song that I have been enjoying for a little while. And it blesses me ever so often. And if you see my ears plugged, I'm sometimes listening to this particular song. It says, Life is easy when you're up on the mountain and you've got peace of mind like you've never known. But things change when you're down in the valley. But don't lose faith, hallelujah, for you're never alone. For the God of the mountain is still God in the valley. When things go wrong, glory, he'll make them right. And the God of the good times is still God in the bad times. The God of the day is still God in the night. You talk of faith when you're up on the mountain. But talk comes so easy when life's at its best. Now it's down in the valleys of trials and temptations. Whoa. That's where your faith is really put to the test. Echo Shanda, but the God on the mountain is still God in the valley. When things go wrong, he'll make them right. And the God bad times 
the God of the day is still God in the night. You talk of faith when you're up on the mountain, but talk up so easy when life's at its best glory. Now it's down in the valleys of trials and temptations. That's where your faith is really put to the test. The God of the mountain is still God in the When things go wrong, he'll make them right. And the God of the good times is still God in the bad times. The God of the day. God in the night, the God of the day is still God in the night. Hallelujah! Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah, glory to God. Echo Shane. Ah, we talk of faith when we are on top of the mountain. Mm. Talk comes easy when things are good. But when we are down in the valley woo, of trials and temptations, that's when our faith is sorely put to the test. But today it's time for the supernatural. You know, supernatural relates to something that exists beyond the visible, observable universe. It is a phenomenal and above normal experience that really transcends or go outside of the boundaries or the laws of nature. Okay, the Bible says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, says God. And in Ephesians 3, 20, it says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask. And if that wasn't good enough, it's all that we can ask or think. According to the power that worketh in us. Uh, there are some things that we think, and we are, we are mobile creatures spiritually, and the spirit realm is even more real than the, than the natural realm, because many of you can be sitting right here now and go all the way home to your oven, to your kitchen, to the child who you left home, or the elderly person, while you're still sitting in our presence. So God is going to go beyond even our thoughts. And sometimes we fantasize about some things that we want to become. We, we, we build some, some citadels in our hearts about where we would like to be in our business, where we would like to be in our families, and we dream, and we dream big because dreams don't need money, dreams don't need resources until we attempt to implement it. So the word of the Lord says in Matthew 13, speaking about the experience in Nazareth. And he did mighty works in Nazareth. He did not do mighty works there, his hometown, because of their unbelief. So we're going to go on a journey this morning. And the Lord Jesus, prior to this particular passage, the, he spoke a lot of parables to those who he was speaking with. 
And he spoke about the kingdom of heaven being likened unto leaven. Then he spoke of the kingdom of heaven being a buried treasure who someone will sell everything and then buy. Or it could be the pearl of great price where the merchant man will sell all he has and buy it. And Jesus asked them, have you understood all of these things? And they said, oh, yes, Lord. He says, therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like known to a householder who takes out of his treasures old things and new things. And many of you know what that's like. You live in a country of seasons. He then departs to his hometown in Nazareth. And a lot of us, whoever we are, even if we are not churchgoers or we are not religious individuals, we know all about Nazareth. And that's where the Lord Jesus grew up. And in the passage today, the Lord is speaking about what the experience he had among his own countrymen. They rejected him once, but he has come back to Nazareth. He's back here with you. If you have in any way been rejecting him, he's back to be with you. And today is your time for the supernatural. They expressed quite openly their contempt for him. They were astonished, mark you, at the fact that he spoke with such wisdom. They admired his doctrine, but only that it should not be from him. He was too unlikely a person to be speaking with such power, to be speaking with such wisdom. He, 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 they wanted him to be a little more academically qualified. Uh, whence comes this person with these mighty works? Uh, where has he been studying? What has he been doing? And, and they're more concerned about a scholastic experience. And people today still do have that challenge. And oftentimes it's so nice to stay in a corner and let them guess who you are. Because sometimes if you tell them who you are, they may have the wrong impression of where your inspiration comes from. Hallelujah. Mm, mm, glory. So he was just a little man. And, and, and they, they went even into the meanness and the poverty of his relations. Is not this the carpenter's son? Yes, it is true. Oh, uh, That's true. And there's nothing wrong with it. Why are you reminding me about that? I know who my dad is, that he was a carpenter. And, and, and isn't this Mary's son? So, yes. So, what does that have to do? But remember where he is and follow with me. He is in his hometown. Uh, so he's not a person of honor among those who he grew up with. And similarly, you will not be a person of honor among those who know you well. To a large extent, they are remembering your history. They are remembering your past. They are remembering your mistakes. Even if you have corrected them and they are looking back at channeling you in their minds mentally back to where you ought to be in their estimation. Hmm. Oh, glory to God. So they are measuring his worth by his antecedents. They are measuring who he can become by who his parents are. So they are looking on his family tree and they are saying, Oh, this one doesn't qualify. Uh, some of us have some relatives that we don't even want to talk about because we don't even want anyone to know we have a connection there. But my God is not concerned about who I was. Hallelujah. He's not worried about the fact that I was a dirty sinner. Oh, glory to God. He is interested in making me experience the supernatural. Mm. Oh, glory to God. Mm. They were offended by him. And, and these are some of the stumbling stones that people put in our path. But today I am keeping reminding you it's time for the supernatural. But it didn't trouble the Lord Jesus. It appears he was not too concerned. 
in Hebrews 20, 12 and verse 2, it says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and is set down at the right hand of God. He knows his position. When you know who you are, you don't listen to the persons who berate you. When you're comfortable in your shoes, oh, glory to God, you don't have to fight with anyone who competes with you and measures you according to others. Glory, hallelujah. So instead of being embarrassed or given an answer that seemed foolish, as some of us would do, get a little angry and disturb our emotional equilibrium, no, oh, glory to God, he just took it. He says, a prophet is without honor in his own country. You are going to be undervalued. You are going to be discounted. People will even question whether you are authentic. And you know, we have a lot of reasons why we do that today. Yes, but this did not cause him to get angry and to lay down his hands. He says, some mighty works I would have done here, but you don't believe. So unbelief is the obstruction to the favors that Christ wants to do for us. He says, all things are possible to him that believe. If you can believe, in St. Mark 9 verse 23, all things are possible to him that believeth. But many of us don't really believe a scripture like that. But we need to accept the written word to experience the supernatural experience in our lives. If we don't remind ourselves of what God said about what he can do, we will not be happy to step in to the supernatural. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation, to everyone that believe. Very often we are waiting for circumstances to change. But we just need that new way of thinking that our sister read about in Ephesians this morning. But the supernatural is not hindered by our circumstances. It's time for the supernatural. It's time to go where you have never been. <laughs> it's time to go where people think you will never go. Glory to God. We want to spend a little a word with you regarding our thoughts. Because to a large extent, what hinders us in real, real terms is that our thoughts manage us. At the seat of our actions are our thoughts. But today, in 2 Corinthians 10, verse 5, it says, we're going to cast down imaginations. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity, lock them up, chain them, handcuff them, every thought that is not in a obedience to Christ. Yes, it's time for the supernatural. We're going to look at some examples in the word of God. Many of us have heard about Mary and Martha and Lazarus, and that's a recording in St. John 11, and how the Lord Jesus had waited too long to get to them. And some of you here might be saying, God, I'm here. I've come here. I, I'm invited. I'm just here to probably submit to an invitation or you may be in your, in your own dwelling, in your motor vehicle. You say, I'm just looking at this site because, you know, one of our wonderful young men have invited me to have a look. But I'm not really interested. I'm speaking to you too. I'm speaking to you. Hallelujah. Ah, uh, so Lazarus was dead. And Lazarus was not just dead yesterday. Lazarus was dead, dead. He had been dead for four days. And any normal human being understands that. Four days is a long time to be dead. I don't care how much you love me. If I should die, you would never keep me four days unless you had me embalmed or something. You wanted to get rid of me because something is going to happen. Mm? And the Bible says, 
Martha was a little concerned. She said, Lord, if you were here, my brother wouldn't die. And he says, oh, but you know, on the resurrection and the life. She said, yes, I know that's it, but at a future date. So God wanted to change her mind to understand that I am here. And God is here for your resurrection today. There are some dead things that have been existing in your experience around your house, in your business, in whatever you are involved in. And God wants you to know he is the resurrection and the life. And the barrier we usually have is when we have things evident in us, in the natural. So the smell is going to affect us. But then there is another motivation that we should grasp and grab with both hands. God is able. Let's not look at the physical and say, oh, this is an impossible situation. But let us look to God who is always able. Sometimes, brethren, we are too logical. Sometimes, friends, our logical thinking defies everything that God wants to do. But we need to take action. And in the case of Lazarus, the action was to roll away the stone. I'm sure many who were sitting, standing there might, might have said, wow, I need a handkerchief. I need a mask. Uh, this is going to be bad because he's really dead and has been so for a little time. But when the Lord Jesus spoke to Lazarus, he said, Lazarus, come forth. And he wasn't waiting on anyone to help him. He says, Father, you know, we spoke about this before. But just for the benefit of those who are beside me, I am saying, Lazarus, come out. And the Bible tells me he came out. He was still bound as they put him in. And somebody had to loose him to let him go. Somebody needs to be loosed today. You may have been enticed by the message of salvation. You may have been enticed of an invitation to move up higher in God. But you need to be loosed. There are some attachments that you are hanging on to that needs to be cut loose. Mm. Oh, glory. It's time for this supernatural glory to God. Mm. And then we look at Hannah. She was married to Elkanah, and he had two wives. One was Hannah, and the other was Penina. Now, Hannah had no children. Penina had children, and she taunted her. That's the natural barrier to the success that is evident in God for Hannah. So here comes the taunter. You are a barren woman. I have had all the children. But somehow the husband loved Hannah. Right? And she went to God. And she took the action. Her motivation was that she wanted to give to God a son. She said, God, if you bless me with a son, I'm going to give him back to you. And here comes Samuel. It was not logical for anyone looking on so Eli looking on at her and seeing her just moving her lips said you know she, she must be drunk and somehow she never got angry like our Lord Jesus when he was abused she never got angry she was just moving her mouth and there was no voice heard and he thought she was drunk just sometimes people are going to think some special things about you some terrible things about you. Sometimes they are going to think that you have been dabbling in something because things can't be going so bad with you for such an extended period of time. And they may even want to come to you and say you need to do something about it. But when she took her case to Jesus, he granted her her request and her child was born and she had an opportunity to give him back to God and we look at David and Goliath and all of us as Sunday school students or persons who have heard about the story in 1 Samuel 17 where the Israelites were being seriously tormented by a mighty giant and Goliath thought he had them real pat. They were quaking in their shoes. They were so afraid. 
Oh, but there was a little boy, a lad. And he asked, what shall be done to the man that killed this Philistine? Ah, oh, this uncircumcised Philistine. Sometimes we need to name the problems in our lives. We need to look at it as big as it is and said you can't manage me hallelujah glory to God ah oh, and they told him what should be done and and you know it was natural to be taunted by the size of this man and he was well clad he was prepared for war but then when David came persons were encouraging him to match Goliath and too often, persons encourage us to match others in our fight to get where God wants us to go. But resist it, get that thought captive, bring it into subjection, into under the authority of the word of God. Mm. So the natural barrier is that, oh, you come, David, you're not prepared for war. Saul says, here's something you need. You need to put on something. You need to get something to protect you. But we don't need any protection but Almighty God. We observe the law of the land, um, health professionals, to wear our masks. But I tell myself, glory to God, I'm covered from my head to my toe. Ah, oh, the blood is on every part of me. And you too can experience that. You too are covered under the blood. And God is going to protect you whether or not the enemy likes it. Mm, glory. So Goliath felt comfortable. And he felt big. And the Israelites were quaking. And they were looking at his size. But I can see David saying, Ah, oh, this man is really too big to be missed. He gives me a lot of area to reach. Rather than saying he's too big and will conquer me, David looked at Goliath and said, Wow, wonderful idea. This target is too big to be missed. There are some big things that come against you that God is going to tear down on your behalf. So he took his sling and he brought it down. So Goliath was slain and that was supernatural. How can you come against a man of war with a sling and a stone? How did you find that little space in his forehead be behind all his armor to reach? But God is precise and God's going to take out your enemy. Don't you ever fear. Be not afraid. Be not discouraged. God's going to take out your enemy. And then we came to a much bigger story of Moses when he got to the Red Sea. But the Lord had said, I will fight for you. Don't cry to me. Speak unto the children of Israel. Tell them to go forward. Don't stop. But lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea. And what I liked about that verse, Lady Sharon, it says, and divide it. I said, why didn't he say, and I will divide it? He is giving the authority to Moses. Mm, once you obey the instructions of Almighty God, even if it is something small and it is an implement that God is going to use, use it and divide asunder the things that are coming against you in the name of Jesus. Uh, and as if it wasn't good enough, uh, he, was, he may have been a little reticent about using a little rod for a big red sea. But then after the people came out, and you know, I often think he must have lifted up the, the, the level of the ocean as well. Because to travel down and up might have been a little difficult. But when they came out, 
and they looked back. The enemy is strategic. The enemy will make you feel that you think you got through. Look behind you. There are your enemies on chariots. You are on foot. They are on horses. You are walking. They are running. And he's trying to say to you, you can't make it with that tribe. You can't make it with that host. But God spoke to Moses. And he said, you see them coming? Stretch your rod again. Go Shanda. And I'm sure this time he was a little more active in responding. He stretched his rod and the waters came back. And I see all the 600 chariots and the armies of the Egyptians swallowed up in the wave. That was truly supernatural. I've given you those. And let's not cause the barriers we see to play on our minds. If the thought that comes to you is a thought that does not match the word of God, rebuke that thought. If he says, I will heal you, and the thought comes to you and says, but the pain is there, I still feel the lump. Rebuke that thought, and I don't mean in your mind, but audibly. I rebuke that thought thought. Let the devil hear you telling him that you're not in his corner. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There are some things that you're going to be amazed of when God acts on your behalf. You're going through a rough time. Like Sarah, you may be barren and you want a child, but God's going to deliver you outside of the normal. God's going to bless you like the woman with the issue of blood. She shouldn't be in any company. But she said, if I could but touch. She said, I don't care who is going to try to prevent me. I just want to touch just the hem, Lord. Oh, I don't want to hug you, Jesus. I just want Anything that touches you to touch me. Glory to God. And immediately she was whole. I want to plead with you today, brethren and friends, brothers and sisters. We need to move from the emotional excitement of being in God's presence. We have to go beyond that and take into captivity every thought that is against that which God has for us. We need to see the barriers, the physical barriers, and still go ahead as if they are not there. We need to look in the cupboard and it is empty and still put on our pots. We need to go to the bank with the card, knowing you don't expect anything there, but God is going to make a provision. I remember some time ago when I, I did make a plan to apply for a particular job in government. And I knew it was a job which was not well paid. And many persons, these are my barriers. Many persons says, you're an idiot. You have no ambition. I said, I don't know what God is doing. And I'm just asking you, well, my husband, he was probably the only one who says, Pat, I'll pray. I'll help you pray about this. I said, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what's the next move. But I am, I, all I know is God is calling me to do this. And brethren, when I reached the interview, they said, we know you didn't want this position because of the accolades, because there's none. You don't want it because of the pay, because there's none. As a matter of fact, the pay is one-third of what you are currently getting with no perks. And they looked at me in the interview and said, are you still interested in the job? I said, yes. But you know, brethren, when I looked at the person asking the question, right behind was a painting, a picture. Not, not physical, but by an image that appeared when I looked to answer. And it said, 
that's the ram caught in the thicket. So I didn't know what God was going to do, but I am believing him. And weeks after, they called me and they said, I went to your job. I spoke to your chairman. I told them, we want you, but we want you not to lose a penny. So they have promised to pay you the difference between what government could pay and what they can pay. Sometimes we need to look to the supernatural. Oh, we need to have some, some experiences under our belts to, to say that God is able. I went home with two checks every month for three years. I drove my previous company car, drove into petrol station, fill up my, my tank on my previous company's account. God is faithful. I watched some of those who told me I had no ambition. I watched them coming into that organization, applying for a job. I watched my VP at a previous job applying to be my deputy. Oh, Jesus, I'm not boasting. I'm just telling you, you can trust God. You don't have to bow to the things that the enemy put in your way. We need to move from feelings. We need to let our emotions be in control. We need to speak to our emotions and say, fear, I speak to you. This is not according to the word of God. I cancel this thought. Hallelujah. Oh, God did not just heal the sick and raise the dead miraculously for you to doubt him. He has done all that so we can trust him. Are you an atheist today listening to me? You don't even believe that God exists. I told you my story and you cannot tell me how that happened except by supernatural means. I told you the stories in the Bible and all of them were supernaturally developed. And if you need a change, you don't need to wait. You don't need to even wonder about who is going to be against you. You don't even have to worry about people who will look down at you. Because we who are born again know that we're not looking down at anybody or up at anybody. We're all one in Christ Jesus. You're on drugs. You're hooked on alcohol. Uh, pornography has been your night season. But God is saying to you today, you can be different. When Jesus comes, the tempter's power is broken. He will take all your glory. Boom, glory to God and fill your life with glory. It's time for the supernatural, not just in the house here today, but it's time for the supernatural to occur in your life. Uh, Acts 2 verse 38 speaks of the baptism in the name of Jesus and the infilling of the Holy Ghost. That can be yours today. You don't need to try to rearrange your life. Come just as you are. Cross the barriers in your own way. Seek the motivation you need to take your thoughts into subjection to the authority of God. Captive to the knowledge of God. Don't continue to lose time. It's time to be rewarded. It's time. It's time. It is time for the supernatural. God bless you.